Good day and thank you for joining us. So if you can remember from last week's lesson, we touched a bit on basic products at the end of that recording lesson. Cool. So in this lesson, we will be going in depth into products, focusing on, well, a revision of last week, we did a monomial times binomial, we also did monomial times trinomial. So this is just a bit of a revision question over here. And then from there, we'll be moving on to the different types of products, products that you can expect to see more often and focusing on products that are on the level of grade nine questions. So getting started here, we know that when we're timesing out this brackets, um, we are timesing this monomial into the binomial. So it is timesing into the first term, then the second term, right? So Let's go ahead, we say negative 4 times 4x squared y. So remember coefficient times coefficient first. It's negative 4 times positive 4, which gives me a negative 16. And then because the variables have nothing to times, the variables will but remain the same. And then negative 4 times negative 2, it's a negative times a negative, which is a positive 8. Cool. So moving on to what we consider now our grade 9 examples we have now a binomial times a binomial, which is basically, as you can see, this brackets binomial and another binomial in brackets over here. We are just going to times both them out. So the way we do that is once at first, we will focus on, focus on the blue color that I'm using here. The two X will times the two X in that brackets and then two times the negative three Y afterwards. And then once that is done, we'll focus on the light blue which is the negative 3, which is going to afterwards times the, the 2x, and then the negative 3y. So focusing on our dark blue first, we have 2x times 2x, we get 4x squared. 2x times a negative 3y, we get negative 6xy. And now we have, focusing on the light blue, we have negative 3 times 2x, we get negative 6x and then negative 3 times and negative 3y we get positive 9y so are there any like terms in here we can see that there are not any like terms so as we see it here this is the final answer after timesing the binomial by the binomial Right over here, we have a second example to have a look at. We have x minus 3y as the first binomial and then y minus 6 as the second. As we did in the previous one, we'll focus on the dark blue first. And then we'll focus on the light blue. So looking at the dark blue, we have x times y, we get xy. Then we have x times negative 6, we have negative 6x. Apologies, let me just fix that up. Negative 6x, there we go. Now we're focusing on the light blue, negative 3y times y, we get negative 3y squared. And then negative 3y times negative 6, we get a positive 18y. Are there any like terms to look at here? We can see that they are not, and this will be our final answer. Moving on now to another type of products that we will deal with is binomial squared. So how do we work with binomial squared? Binomial squared basically means that, remember when we're squaring anything, say if we have two squared, that would equal to two times two. So we'll see this twice over, right? This will be timesing itself and answered before, obviously, but that's besides the point here. So how do we apply that here? Obviously, whatever's being squared is being doubled, right? So if we're squaring this bracket, the bracket will be timesing itself. So there's the one timesing itself. And what we end up making here is a binomial times binomial situation once again. So that's what happens to the binomial squared. Because the bracket is being squared, we are times in the bracket by the same bracket. Cool. And then just like we did before, we'd be timesing. Let's make it light blue first. And then orange second. Cool. So focusing on the light blue, 
we have a times a which gives me a squared and then a times negative 2 which gives me negative 2a so you can see we time using this out exactly like a binomial times binomial now so when we have a binomial squared situation all there is is an extra step of writing out the brackets twice cool now moving on to orange we have negative 2 times a we get negative 2a and then negative 2 times negative 2 gives me positive 4 and our final answer is going to be a squared at negative 2a minus 2a because they are like terms right so negative 2a minus 2a gives me negative 4a plus 4 and that is our final answer moving on now to number five over here we have another binomial squared so we remember what our first step always is it's going to be writing out the brackets twice because we are times in the bracket by itself So, once again, we times in this first term into both terms and then the second term into both terms again. So, 2a times 2a gives us 4a squared. 2a times negative 3b gives me negative 6ab. Negative 3b times 2a gives me negative 6ab once again, as these are the same terms being times. And then negative 3b times negative 3 gives me positive 9b squared. And there are like terms here in the middle to deal with, so our final answer will come to 4a squared. Minus 6 minus 6 gives me negative 12. And we'll bring the variables a, b, plus 9b squared. And that is the final answer there for the binomial squared example. Moving on now, we have a, a binomial times a trinomial. So, how is this going to work? It's going to work exactly the same as we've been doing binomial times binomial, except we have an extra term to times. So, this first term over here, which is indicated by the dark blue, will times the first term, then after that it times the second term, and then the third term. Then we take our light blue over here, this is our light blue, which is the negative y, times the first term, the second term, and then the third term. So focusing on our dark blue first, we have 2x times 4x squared. So that will give me 8. Remember, coefficient first, 8. x to the power of 3. 2x times 2xy will give me positive 4x squared y. And then 2x times y squared gives me positive 2xy squared. Then moving on now to the second term here, which is the blue term, the lighter blue, it's negative y times 4x squared. We get negative 4x squared y. Negative y times 2xy, we get negative 2xy squared. And then negative y times y squared gives me negative y to the power of 3. So then after that, we look for any like terms. There are no like terms to go with cubed, so we have 8x cubed. Look for any other like terms. We have x squared y. Here is another x squared y. You can see that this is a positive 4x squared y and this is a negative x squared y, so they will cancel each other out. Then we'll look for the next one, which is going to be uh, xy squared. Here's another xy squared. So we can see that this is a positive 2xy squared and a negative 2xy squared, meaning they will cancel each other out, being additive inverses. And then our final, what's left over is negative y to the power of 3. And so our final answer for this example will be 8x cubed minus y cubed. Now moving on to the last section that we're busy with now is fractions. So what you'll come across sometimes in your grade 9 syllabus will be the fractions, right? So what ends up happening here, we have 5 
a minus a fifth, and this is a plus a fifth. So if we break this up, we have a monomial times a binomial here in the first section. And then we have a, in the second section, binomial times a binomial. So what we can do here is we can either do binomial times binomial or we can do a monomial times a binomial. It doesn't matter which way you do it first, both ways will work out to the same answer. So in this case, let's go ahead and do the monomial times the binomial. So as you know, the 5 will times into the a and then it will times into the negative a fifth. So if we work this out, we get 5 times a gives me 5a. And then 5 times negative a fifth. If we just write that out, we have 5 times negative a fifth. So remember, if we times in fractions, uh, it's easier to make the whole number fraction as well. So now we have 5 over 1 times negative 1 over 5. So we know a positive times a negative, our answer is going to be a negative. So remember when we times in fractions, it's numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So 5 times 1, we have 5 over 1 times 5 gives me 5. So now remember if we have the numerator and denominator as the same, we know that the answer is 1 whole. Cool? So if our numerator and denominator is the same, our answer is 1. So this answer is negative 1. And so because we've times the 5 into the binomials, which is in the brackets, we'll keep this in brackets, okay? So we times the monomial into the binomial, which put it into brackets. And then we are timesing it still by this bracket on the side, which is a plus a fifth. So now we'll follow our rules of binomial times binomial. So it will first be 5a times a and then 5a times a fifth. So 5a times a gives me 5a squared. And then 5a times a fifth is going to be. So if we just look here, it's the same as saying 5 times a fifth, except we have that variable a now. So we'll still get to a answer that is one whole. So if we have the one whole and the variable added, so we just have 1a as the answer here, right? Or you can just write it as a. And then we have a neg negative 1 times a and then negative 1 times a fifth. So negative 1 times a gives me negative 1a or negative a. You write it either way. And then negative 1 times a fifth gives me negative a fifth. So if you look here in the middle, we have like terms negative 1a and positive 1a, which will cancel each other out being additive inverses. And then our final answer here will work out to 5a squared minus a fifth. And then coming to our final example here, we have a monomial times a binomial. And this is once again fractions. So what we'll do first is get rid of that mixed number. Because remember when we're working with fractions, we don't really work with mixed numbers. We prefer to bring them to improper fractions as they're easier to work with. So we'll make this, keep this here 2 over 3x. And then inside the brackets, just to re recap on how to turn mixed number in improper fractions. It's 4 times the 1, which gives me 4, plus 1 gives me 5. So we keep the denominator and we use that 5 on top now. It's 5 over 4y minus a quarter. So if we're going to times this into the brackets now, we're going to say 2 over 3x times 5 over 4y. Remember, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So that's 2 times 5 gives me 10 at the top. And at the bottom, it's 3 times 4 gives me 12 at the bottom. And remember, our variables x times y gives me x, y. And then we're going to times 2 over 3x into a negative a quarter. So now our answer is negative straight off the bat. 2 times 1 gives me 2. 3 times 4 gives me 12. And the variable x carries over. So now all that's left to do is to simplify our fractions. And what we end up getting is, so 10 over 2, if we divide all of that by 2, we get 5 over 6xy. And then if we divide all of this by 2, we get minus 1 over 6x as our 
final answer there. So that is going to do it for today's lesson. Thanks so much for joining. I hope that this has helped you to understand your products a bit better and also prepare you for the year of grade nine ahead, dealing with the higher level product questions. Thank you so much for joining us.